Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with temperature regulation. Whenever you hear regulation in physiology, you're talking about control. You can use them interchangeably, okay? You can say temperature control, all right? So thermoregulation, sometimes you can call it thermoregulation. Thermo. Thermoregulation, okay? Thermo is temperature, has to do with measurement of heat and so on. And cold. Now, what do we use to measure temperature? Everybody knows that. Thermometer. Thermo. Thermometer. Sorry, thermometer. Okay? So, the body. Temperature is a very classic example at this level that will really make us understand control systems. You know, we started with control systems. We mentioned the different components, about five of them. Now we're going to be using something very practical that we can all relate to it, temperature regulation. The body wants to maintain temperature within a narrow range. So the first thing you ask yourself, why? every time always ask yourself why and we said that one of the things that happens in the body is you have a lot of chemical reactions and those chemical reactions are powered catalyzed hastened enhanced made possible by enzymes and fortunately enzymes are proteins very versatile in the way they operate and enzymes being proteins they are very sensitive to change in two major things temperature and ph we mentioned all this so if the temperature is too low lower than what it should be it they become inactive a lot of chemical processes stop and chemical processes they are the basis of physiological function if it's too high the same thing they are denatured and all of that so that's why the body has a very dedicated system control system to regulate temperature like doesn't go too high it doesn't go too high. we're going to be looking at how it does that now when you are measuring temperature sometimes there are different places you use we have the peripheral peripheral temperature and we have the core temperature so peripheral temperature is when you use thermometer you put it in your armpit or in your mouth even in your mouth you can, you can measure temperature putting it in your mouth those are peripheral means they are not measuring the real temperature inside 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 the body okay so peripheral temperature is around 36 to 37 now if you want to be more specific 36.5 to 37.4 degrees centigrade okay but core temperature measures the temperature in the inner organs and systems the temperature within the blood itself okay so where you put the thermometer there is usually in the rectum and from the inner, you push it inside. You know, thermometer is very slender, right? So it's easy to relate. It, re it can easily fit in. So the rectal, through the rectum, rectal temperature measures core temperature, and it's usually 37.8, which if you convert it to Fahrenheit, about 100 degree Fahrenheit. Okay? So that's by the way. Now, we want to now look at the factors because if you want to understand control first of all what are those external
external factors both external and internal that can change the temperature remember everything starts from stimulus stimulus is something that initiates a change then the receptor picks it up transfers it to the control and all of that so what are those things that can initiate a change that can affect the temperature both upward or downward so we're going to be looking at factors that lead to heat gain okay heat gain when we heat gain processes processes that occur that can lead to heat gain then also heat loss things that can make the body temperature go down heat loss okay so what are those factors let's talk about heat gain now one of them is muscular activities is very very important muscular activities if you exercise so much go to the gym for example you are gymming or you are jogging 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 you you see yourself your body temperature rises very fast as the muscles are contracting relaxing contracting relaxing and doing a lot of work energy is being used and one of the byproducts of energy utilization is heat okay so muscular activities lead to heat gain number two metabolic metabolic activities metabolic activity is just another word for the different chemical processes okay that go on in the body both metabolic can be divided into anabolic anabolic that's built up and catabolic catabolic which is breakdown build up breakdown to synthesize manufacture things and the liver is the chief metabolic organ so metabolic activities is they are all related okay they are all related then number three you have hormonal hormonal activities okay hormonal activities hormones they also play role they are related to these metabolic activities because hormones can they can help to stimulate some actions in the cell chemical process in the cell and there are two major hormones that usually lead to this heat gain one of them is tyroxine tyroxine is produced from the thyroid gland it's located around here when a lot of tyroxine is released it speeds up chemical reactions in the body lead to heat gain another one is adrenaline Adrenaline is usually released in situations where you need to act in emergency. For example, you see a dog trying to pretend to bite you. Immediately, you start. Your adrenaline is released a lot. Okay, in that instance. So, adrenaline helps to speed up so that you can have enough energy to fight or to flee or to run. So, that's what happens. Metab muscular, metabolic hormonal okay then another one that doesn't come from inside this one comes from outside is radiation and this comes from the environment when the environment is hotter than the body it will transfer heat to the body okay when environment is hotter than the body okay so that's what happens then now heat loss processes what are the things that can make the body lose heat we've talk, looked at heat gain now one of them is evaporation evaporation and evaporation happens from the skin when you sweat so from sweating you have evaporation evaporation releases heat into the environment 
okay then another one which is related to this radiation but in the opposite sense conduction convection and this happens when the environment is colder than the body okay it's colder than the body so it will now affect the body and reduce the temperature of the body okay so this is when the environment is colder than the body so in a nutshell this is these are the things that lead to heat loss things that lead to heat gain so the next thing i'm going to be looking at very closely what are those components okay the control center the receptor that detects change in here are going to be looking at a special thing about temperature is that you have two different kinds of receptors and the way they operate one of them operates in a feed forward mechanism another one operates in a feedback name very interesting stuff we're going to be looking at that after this break all right welcome back so now we're going to be looking at the real mechanism of temperature regulation based on those components of control systems now let's start with the control center like i said the control center even the receptor you have two kinds of receptor and even the control center it has two parts and the control center is located in the brain not just the brain vaguely but there's a particular part of the brain called the hypothalamus okay the hypothalamus the component is small part of the brain okay so that hypothalamus you have the posterior side and the anterior side controlling these two parts okay so the posterior hypothalamus is the heat gain center okay this one is heat gain then you have the anterior the anterior hypothalamus that one is for heat loss but let, now let's start with the receptor the receptor now we have two types of thermoreceptors we call them thermoreceptors or sensor okay thermo receptors we have two types you have the peripheral thermoreceptors peripheral and you have the central so interestingly this central thermoreceptors they are located in the hypothalamus but these peripheral thermoreceptors where do you think they are located the skin you know the skin when you are the environment is affecting the body either making it hotter or making it colder where it touches first is the skin that's why you have thermoreceptors there okay so you have peripheral thermoreceptors so this happens when either there is the environment is hotter or colder so it feels the temperature and then they are sold all over the skin thermoreceptors and what they they, they do what they transfer through nerves they transfer the afferent through afferent nerves so through afferent nerves they send that message whether it's cold or hot they send the message then the control center responds depending on if there is heat loss it will activate the heat gain center if there is heat gain the environment is hotter it will activate the heat loss center okay so that's what happens in this peripheral then the central thermoreceptors what they sense mainly is the temperature of the blood 
okay because it's in the hypothalamus and as blood okay no blood supply supplies every tissue organ of the body so as it senses the temperature of the blood okay which is the core temperature the real temperature we are talking about so it senses it and then it acts in the same way if the temperature of the blood is getting lower than normal it will activate the heat gain center of the habit if the temperature of the blood is hotter than normal to activate the heat loss center and then if it wants to lose heat what happens it now causes what we call vasodilation you understand that's when heat needs to be lost from the body it causes we are talking about how the sweating results causes vasodilatation what do i mean vasodilatation okay sometimes you can remove this ta and call it vasodilation so it means the blood vessels the muscles the blood vessels they have muscles smooth muscles that can contract or relax when they contract the blood vessels become the lumen the size the diameter becomes smaller okay that's constriction vessel constriction when they dilate that means the muscles are relaxing remember that effectors are usually muscles and glands we said that before so the effector here now is those smooth muscles of the blood vessel so they dilate in when they want to lose it they dilate so as they dilate blood flows more to the skin okay so those blood vessels are blood vessels that supply the skin so as blood is flowing more to the skin it activates the sweat glands you can see the two things there a muscle is acting smooth muscle of the vessels blood vessels in the skin then sweat glands which is now the one that produces the sweat that now comes out through the skin and evaporation happens and it cools the skin as it's cooling the skin that coolness is touching those blood vessels and transferring that coldness to the blood that's flowing through the blood vessel and it circulates around the body and it helps to cool the body so that's what happens so when there's cold it activates this heat gain center and it leads to effectors okay it sends message to all the muscles of the body this time it's skeletal muscles you need to you can't control it you begin to shake you begin to shiver it's trying to generate heat that's how that's how it regulates the, the body regulates temperature either this side or this side all right so that is it then there's something i need to mention no i promise you that i'm going to look at at this one of these receptors one of them is feed forward the other one operates in the feedback now look at how it happens this peripheral thermoreceptors when the environment you are you enter into a room and there's ac very chilled so immediately the peripheral thermoreceptors are sensing cold and before you know it you start shivering but at that moment they started sensing it's at the surface the core temperature has not yet changed understand it's still at the surface but it's sensing that because the environment is so cold it will soon start affecting the core temperature so it already starts to start shivering even before the core temperature changes so feed forward anticipates the change and starts acting to adjust to correct it but this central thermoreceptor because it's measuring the heat from the blood which is core temperature means the core temperature has already changed so it is reacting to this reactionary feedback this one is feed forward all right so that's what happens this two aspects so this is what temperature regulation is all about very classic example of how control systems work okay so see you in the next lecture